Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Koji Sheldon. The head is big for a reason. Now, this is a different sentence, and this conversation is important to a youth-driven platform like ours because uh, we've been making series of videos about what our leaders, are, about what presidential candidates uh, are putting out there, what they would come and do for us, the youth. Um, we've had conversations, we've discussed a lot of policies, manifestos, and everything. Now, one person that has put out, you know, 10 pointers, you know, actionable plans for the youth that we need to concentrate on and have a conversation about is the leader for movement for change. Now, he introduced us to the great tra transformational plan. And in it, we have 10 pointers that he's outlined for the youth, that this is what I'm going to do for, you, for the youth. And as a result of this, you guys should, you know, uh, vote, on me, vote for me based on these things. Now, I have him here with me, and we are going to have a conversation about it, about what is happening, uh, the perception about uh, these uh, things that he's going to do for the youth and everything. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, my name is Kweju Sheldon, and I'm here with Mr. Alan Kweju Shermatin, leader for the Movement for Change. Say, welcome. Thank you. My Everything brother. cool. Everything I feel cool. speak Fiji plus. Oh, yeah, I mean, you go on. Make I do am. Uh, you can do am. No, you say no, you say you, say you can do am. Yo, you go do am. Okay, anyway, but um, you've been moving from one constituency to the other, uh, trying to whip up interest for your policies, trying to whip up interest for people to, you know, vote for you as an option that it will make sense to them and everything. How has it been for you, though? Um, I've been following some of the other political candidates. I've seen them move from this to that, and it, it looks like it's tedious. I say, I, you know, I, how are you, you know, going about all these things, making sure that, okay, I'm okay, but at the end of the day, I need to go out there and present my, you know, policies to the people. How has it been for you so far? You, you know, I've been in this game for a long time. Okay. And it's about two things. Mm. It's about strategy and organization. Okay. And you can spend a lot of time in the field. You can spend a lot of money in the field. Mm. But if it is not driven by strategy and organization, mm. in the long run, uh, it will be a waste of time. Okay. People are not sure why I'm called Alan Cash. But I have to use this question to explain to you. Yes. Has uh, it affected you? Has the name affected you? Though? Well, you wait okay. now. You wait now. Eh? <laughs> you know, um, in 2004, 2005, uh, there were like 10 to 12 key figures in government, yeah. leading ministers, who had all shown interest in campaigning to succeed President Kufo. Mm. And I was one of them. Yeah. I was minister for trade and industry at that time, and the current president was the minister for foreign mm. affairs. So if you had 17 leading figures contesting uh, for a position, mm. then you realize that you need to be able to do things that will kind of scatter them. Mm. Scatter you know, them. Scatter them complete mm. Mm. and disrupt them. <laughs> we understand. You know. But because of my background in management, mm. you know, I decided that I will apply some management principles which will confuse them. Mm. So, even with the little funds that I had, I was able to brand my campaign and create the, the, the image of somebody who had resources and who was doing... Meanwhile, people were spending more than I was doing. Mm. You know, so when I step out and the moves that I was making, it was confusing them. So it was like for, more like sentences, and I... Oh, okay. You are right now on the boys, but on me, are your settings? Oh, your settings? Oh, yeah. Do you any settings? No, no. Sir. You were not spending that much. No, no, no. <laughs> but it was a vibe. That, vibe. It, yeah, and they were finding it difficult to understand. Ah, how is this guy vibing us throughout like that? You know. But then, like I said, it was using your resources in an intelligent way. This is smart politics. I started introducing high-profile smart politics mm. in this country with a kind of flashy branding and things like that. Mm. They thought it was money, but it was so. Somehow they said, oh, Alan is doing uh, cash politics. So yes. they said, oh, he's just throwing away money. So they, they said, oh, Alan Cash. 
Alan Kais, you know, thinking that it will create a negative perception about me. Yeah. So I sat down with my strategy team and we went back and forth. Some people felt that, oh, this thing to, fi to finish your campaign, you know, could kill you. Mm. But I said, no. When people try to be negative, use that same platform to create a different opportunity. Mm. So I said, ah, I'll adopt it. So they gave that, uh, my enemies gave me that name. Please Thinking who are your that, enemies? Oh, plenty. <laughs> hey. Oh, them they plenty. Uh, them they plenty. Oh, hey. I, you know, <laughs> what I've gone through in politics, mm. if I didn't have a thick skin, you see, mama be a mwa hi, what you have here? And I, you see, I need that, I need sandy and also what I crash here with it. Hey, now you two, they <laughs> <laughs> this kind of tree, yeah, yes. it's deep. Yes. You know, but just like that, you know, there are people, when they see you, uh, I don't know whether it's, they feel intimidated or something mm. like that. But I've suffered for that throughout my career. Yeah. You know, but I'm cool. I'm gentle. I don't create it. Yeah. But they know, but you're still going they know I'm hard. Yeah. So I decided that, look, I'll adopt the name. Okay. And so, I, because my message and my narrative were anchored on two things, jobs and cash, mm. you know, because it's about having an income. If, if, if you have a job, you have an income, mm. then you have cash. Yeah. So it's the job that would create the cash for you. Mm. So that had been my narrative, you know. So it was feeding directly into my own narrative. Yeah. So I just said, okay, if that's what you think, that's fine. Oh, then everybody started loving it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, no, cash for the bishops. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the judges, bishops cash for the judges. Oh, you know. okay. So, uh, it's, but, it's, uh, so I have, I'm a grassroots person. Yeah. I may not look like that, but mm. I'm very grassroots. Yeah. There's no village in this country where I would go and I would not be recognized or they would not remember my name, mm. you know. So I've had that experience for all these years. So now that I decided I'll get back into the game, mm. it has not been difficult for me. But okay. of course, I do things and never take anything for granted. Okay. So it's gone very well. And mm. uh, to also, uh, I have to be uh, honest about this. Yeah. The circumstances in the country right now has created a compelling narrative for me. Okay. Because if you have two dominant parties, NDC and MPP, who have been in power for 32 years, mm. and still we are in economic crisis, and still we cannot keep the lights on, mm. and still we don't have water, still we, don't, we cannot even feed ourselves, we are damaging our environment. After 32 years, two dominant parties. So it's almost like, ah, Namokura Musa Pepa Abedidu. But Mr. Alan, Mr. Yes. Mr. Chairman, you served in one of yes, the dominant yes, parties. Yes, yes. So it's like, okay, right now you are out. Yes. You are seeing the, yes. the, the damages that they have yes. caused to the yes. country yes. now that you are out. Yes. So you see, say, you say, a patre, eh? Any type of fish comes out of water and says that there's a crocodile there. Mm. You have to believe. But you were in. You served, but that's exactly. You served under no, Kufu. No, so what you, if you listen to what I'm saying, mm. having been in, mm. it makes me the best person to tell you that Enkoye is oh. not very well. Okay. You understand me? Mm. If I mean, like, if somebody outside who has never been in government, mm. now you can't want to try to confuse me and say that, oh, things are not going, well. you've not even been part of it. Mm. So what is the basis for assessment? Okay. So if you are completely new to this game, you don't have the, the basis for making any judgment. Mm. But if you have been part of it, that is the more reason why people should believe you. Because mm. you've, been, you've been in there, mm. you know, but of course, I mean, I will not spend my, my time, my energy, my financial resources to continue working in a system that will not produce the kind of results. Results you want. Yeah. Mm. You know, because I've had a distinguished career, not only in Ghana, 
I mean, not only in Africa, all over the world. Yeah. Master, I can tell I mean, you, mm. look, you see, it's just that sometimes <laughs> if you talk too much about yourself. Blow the trumpet. Oh, blow yeah, I'm going no, to no, blow. This for I'm blow going up. to blow it more. Blow them, blow them, uh, make them know. No, no, Because no, I heard no. a lot of things about you were Forbes and things. Look, I, I mean, if in 1994, yeah. when the millennium of 2000 was approaching, mm. And people were confused. What is going to happen? Because this was a real new millennium. People were confused. What is going? Why two K? Some people thought that the world was going to come to an end. Mm. So Time International Magazine decided that look, they will identify the top hundred global leaders yeah. who they believe were going to determine the future of the world mm. with the coming of the new millennium. Mm. 100 top global leaders. They mentioned Bill Gates, number one. Why did they mention Bill Gates? Because Bill Gates in 1992 has started pushing this whole brand new idea of, you know, uh, computers, Computer, Microsoft. And, uh, PCs and things like that. So they were not just mentioning names, my brother. They were not just mentioning names. So they picked on somebody like uh, Bill Gates. Mm. Then there was a young man in the U.S., John F. Kennedy Jr. Okay. Because of what his father had done, they saw that this is the guy who would control the United States of America going forward. Mm. They were looking at development around the world. Mm. They picked one guy called Jeffrey Sachs. Mm. Jeffrey Sachs is the leading development economist in the world. So they were, the kind of people the they were of people, yeah. were people who they believed would change the world. Then they mentioned Alan Kujimatin mm. of Ghana. Mm. 1994. Let me say, let me say. So what, what about bro? When you, when you were born, <laughs> yeah, you were already mentioning me mm. in higher places. They look at me, sitting here with you. <laughs> no, so it's, it's a privilege. Like, you know, people don't want to celebrate their heroes. Mm. I, and uh, it's, it's very unfortunate. But... I mean, because you're asking me yeah. these questions, that's why I'm responding. Yeah. Around the same time, Mandela had just been released from prison. Mm. And with that prison jar, was a, by the time of your, your life is... Mm. So when he came and he realized, oh, first black president mm. of South Africa, and he realized the, the anonymity of the challenge, you know, these black businesses non-existent, poverty. So he started looking around the world for experts who could help him build black business because he could not rely on the white South Africans, yeah. you know, having put him in jail for all these years. Contrast to them. come and then. So he invited uh, seven experts. 1994, Alan was one of them. Mm. You know, and after that, I, I, I introduced what was called Enterprise South Africa, Enterprise Botswana, Enterprise Uganda, Enterprise Mauritius, building businesses in all these countries. Not when I was in politics. This is outside, Private, yeah. my life outside politics. So if you want politicians who have a record, don't pick people who have become known because of politics. Affiliation. Yes, I won't hear anymore. Senior police are you are nobody. Mm. So that's not the kind of leader you want. Mm. And for, look, remember, every great nation in this world has been great because of great leaders, mm. not great parties. I mean, you you talk about Singapore and Ghana people are oh na singa linkwa you you can. So then you realize that. It was one man, Liu Kuan Yu, mm. who made Singapore what it is today. China, mm. all that we, we, we're looking and talking about China. It took Deng Xiaoping, 1989, 1989, mm. when they got a transformational leader like Deng Xiaoping to turn China around. Eh? And China, from one of the poorest countries, 
Now is the second most powerful economy. So it's about leadership. Mm. Don't let anybody confuse you. Mm. This party stuff, it has no basis. I'm telling you. Yeah, and I think Ghanaians, some that we, they've pumped in our minds that it's party party. It's nothing to do with party. But that is it's where movement for change is heading towards. Because at some point, yeah, yeah, you would right. want to... I was going to ask you a question about mobilization. Okay. You said you're a grassroots person, yeah, right? Yeah. And you know the importance of grassroots, uh, yes, grassroots politics. Now, you need to go down there, have party structures. Yes. If you want to win and yeah. win convincingly, yes, yeah. you need the grassroots people. Yeah. Setting up party structures. Yeah. How it day for movement for change? Because you can go into the constituency and just campaign to them, but you need representation. How Excellent. has it been? For? You, you see, and I'm happy that you've brought this up. Yeah. When people hear about movement because they think it is all their party, mm. they feel that, oh, where are your structures? Yeah. Look, the kind of movement and the organization I have on the ground is deeper than NDC and MPP. I'm telling you. Based on what metrics? You see, because I, I, cannot, I cannot challenge the status quo okay. of a duopoly mm. of NDC and PP and come again talking about the same uh, party structure. Mm. If you are challenging the status of it, you have to create a different... different. But that has nothing to do with the, with the substance and the structure of your organization. Mm. Look, the, the so-called structure that you think the big parties are, they don't have to, they don't have anything. Oh, they have, they have party I'm, officers. Oh, my brother, I'm telling you, okay. me, I've been there. You've been there? They say police station executives. Yes. I'm chairman, I'm this thing. Do you know how the police station executives are selected? No, please. <laughs> <laughs> I sit down, in some cases, they just write, if you go, one person, he says, he's chairman, they write down, his wife, his uh, daughter, children, their police station. They don't do any work. Mm. I'm telling you, they, it is in name. You see, and the reason why Ghanaians, I think, should take what I'm saying very seriously. Yeah. You think that they are structures. And they, are, they are there in name. Because when it comes to primaries, mm. people use money to create an album and they'll put some names there. Yeah. And you think that none of these parties understand what it is to do real house to house. Mm. Because the people who you claim are there as grassroots, are they not the ones who have been complaining? Yeah, I mean, no, most no, of the time. I, I don't know yeah. the ones who have a complaint. Yes. So if they are there, really... But maybe they are blinded by political colors. They view t- things through political lenses. So I, I mean, I'm suffering. Yes, I'm suffering, but my party is MPP. No, and no. I'll vote for them. Uh, it, 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 the, 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 the skills are falling off their eyes now. Okay. Yes. If after 32 years, you are still complaining. Mm. So then... What kind of political color are you talking about? Mm. But the truth of the matter is that I have gone much further down the scale than the political parties. So I have volunteers at the minutest level mm. in the structure. Yeah. And these are people who, are, who believe in my cause and they've dedicated themselves mm. to my cause. And so... They are on the ground. Mm. So don't, don't be deceived okay. by the fact that, oh, this is a political party, this is a movement. Mm. The structure that I have on the ground, mm. it is deeper than a political organization. Are they you compensated? Wait. No, you it, see, uh-huh. but that's the difference. So I want to know that. No, no, but you're right. With this side, they are compensated. Hey, so let's just say, you cry? <laughs> you're doing some very serious political analysis. Yes, I know. Because no, no. I, you see, I, look, <laughs> I mean, I've done interviews. Yes. I've done interviews. Yeah. Some people, when they get mic, okay, <laughs> they, they are just running their mouth. But mm. you are going deep. Thank Again, you. what you are saying now will be some question. It's like Sharma. I think we need to do. The, <laughs> we have to do the job. The groundwork. No. So, so what I'm saying is that mm. what the structures that I have on the ground mm. is based on volunteerism. Volunt- oh, okay, political volunteerism. Political volunteerism. Because may I've come out. I'm saying I'm fighting for a cause. Mm. Those who want to support that cause, support, please. Sign up. And the way people have rushed to sign up mm. for a new organization, it's amazing. Mm. If I give you my database, you'll be shocked. 
Okay. But because we are open source platform, mm. so yeah, but mm. that's exactly what I'm saying. Is people who believe in my cause, yeah, they are the ones who are my volunteers. What do you they, sell no, to them? Yes. What do you tell them? Hope, 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 mm. and that Ghana will rise again. We will rise. Are we down? And and, and that in spite. We, we are down. Yeah, that form. We, we, we are, I don't know the worst form of down. Down flat. Down flat. Mm. We've gone ground zero and below. Mm. But uh, are you not aware? Let uh, me just, I'm uh, a new trophist. Oh, you. <laughs> uh, but no, I know no, what no, you're no, talking no, about. Please. We, we have let, to be let, honest. Let, 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 let's yes. be honest yes. about this. Honestly, even, yeah. even MPP leaders, they know. They, they are, they've admitted. They've admitted. Yeah. You know? So let us not deceive ourselves. Yeah. Things are so bad now that, in fact, there is no justification. Or the, the MPP, for example, should not have any moral authority to say that they want to come and continue to come and continue. That's a bold statement. Oh, we... But that's, look, and the, the alternative also cannot be NDC. <laughs> you see, that's the thing. Hmm. The, the, the MPP, they, they don't have any case at all. Hmm. They don't have any case. They don't have any No case. grounds to campaign. No grounds because <laughs> I'm sure I said to them, okay, you, you, you are failing it. Mm. It is not about Allah wanting to be president. It's about what is your own condition in life now? Mm. If we are say, and they ask you to go and do a lab test, you go die. Hey. You are saying, hey. I'm saying you. I'm saying you. I'm saying you. No, no, no. The true love test, my brother, you are finished. So all I'm saying is that as for NPP, they should not even talk. Mm. Me, I'm a, I've been a founding member of the party. I know where we started from, you know. But it doesn't mean that NDC is the alternative because they have been in the same situation. Mm. They left after eight years with Ghana having to go to IMF. Okay. So the value is the same. Whether Your, it's the NDC, MPP too went to uh, MP, IMF. Yes, but both MPP is there now. Yeah. NDC, before they left, they it took us to IMF. Yeah. So what are we talking about? Okay. If Ghanaians want to be really fair, as for those two, they, are, they, they shouldn't be. Mm. They, 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 no option. Because mm. both of them, after eight years, they land you in IMF. Mm. They land you in crisis. So what is the basis for even contemplating mm. that it is an option to bring them back? You understand? Yes. So this is where the narrative about Alan becomes important. Omo dum lighten. Lighten. Oh, okay. Abba. Abba. It's the, the Ghana that you are talking about. You know, that is what Ghana just happened to us. But um, the lights are back. But so fighting... These established geopolitics. Yes, yeah. For the, on the other side of things, people yeah. have argued that politics of monetary compensation day. Yeah. You are campaigning on volunteerism. People yeah. are volunteering to work for you. Yeah, yeah. How difficult it is to, you know, fight these two like status quo. Like, yeah. you know, these people, like yeah, they I have mean, resources at their yeah, disposal. Yes, absolutely. They can come for you, yeah. smear campaigns and everything. Yeah. You are just going all out and just doing your thing. Yeah. How yeah. hard it is for you to fight these systems. But that's why I made a point earlier on mm. that it's not just about Alan okay. and what I can do or not do. It's also about our kind circumstances. Yeah. There's if there has ever been a compelling case for change, that time is now. Mm. So you see, the circumstances have conspired to create a new vim and new appetite mm. for change. So apart from my own little modest attraction as a politician, the circumstances have generated a certain new environment that is seeking for change. So it, so it has nothing to do with just Alan. Personal interest. This it is, is, this is it is Alan, Alan plus the circumstances. Okay. So if I can tell you, if if Ghanaians had the option mm -hmm. and then we were voting today, mm. most people 
will either not vote or they would vote for change. Mm. And it is clear. Right now, seven out of every 10 Ghanaians you put together, mm. they are looking for change. And Alan is representing that change. Mm. And I've made it clear. So, yes, the two dominant parties may have the resources, but people are making it clear that whether they bring money or not, they are tied mm. and they want change. How can you have two parties competing about who is more corrupt? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, corruption uh, Olympics. Which one uh, has destroyed the environment more? more? Okay. Which of them were doing galamse more than the other? I have destroyed more water than you. Is, is this the kind of it's a competition? competition? Yes, that's what we are doing. Uh, is the kind of competition? That's what they are doing. Not <laughs> as, as men can't be. <laughs> and I, what to galamse? I mean, to be. But then, when I heard that statement, I was disappointed because we we vote people to come and fix issues, right? So you, the politics of equalization has been that's, a problem. That's a problem. Like, the politics of equalization. I don't get yeah. it. And I also feel that we don't audit the background of our leaders. People that represent us. And those who want, who are fighting for power. Mm. Somebody wants uh, to represent your interest. Mm. Please, take time and verify uh, uh, that person's background. Mm. What has he done before mm. to justify your vote? What has he done before? Not what has he done in politics? Mm. So it's a question of us being a bit more circumspect. Mm. If we take our time and compare, mm. you will find the right person. And I can say, I mean, in all modesty, that if it's about... Uh, Ex-President Mahama, if it's about uh, uh, Dr. Baumia, if it's about uh, who else? Mm. Uh, Cheddar. Cheddar, yes. Or any of the other independent guys. Mm. And we are doing an objective assessment. Objective. Number one, vision. Mm -hmm. Number two, competence. Number three, integrity. Number four, capacity to execute. We are doing an assessment on these four values. You find that Alan is your candidate. But they will say Baumia introduced us to digit digitalization. To what? To introduce what? Digitalization. I have done more practical digitalization than he has ever been. Talking about digitalization is different from actually Implement. having the capacity to uh, lead a digitalization effort. Mm. I'm not a, a technical man, but I understand what digitalization is. Mm. I've, I've, that's why I'm saying I have uh, four different tech platforms that I have created. You can look at Trade Africa Online. Okay. The first e-commerce platform to support the African... Uh, uh, not, <laughs> not the one that everybody is selling like, uh, you know, uh, you are competing with Alibaba or you are competing with ton ton, uh, uh, yeah. Amazon. No. This is indigenous uh, African trade. Mm. Because why? And I'm proud to say that I was the chief architect of the African Continental Free Trade Area. Mm. From design to development to implementation, conceptualization, mm. which is, is the biggest project in Africa since uh, Krumah's time. So if the chief architect, the chief designer for this project is now looking for the vote of Ghanaians to become the president. Mm -hmm. We should believe in him. And so it should not be difficult for you to understand that having created that, I can also create a tech platform to facilitate inter-African trade. Mm -hmm. You get me? Right now, if you go to all the e-commerce platforms, they are selling everything. But that one, you're only competing with Alibaba or competing with mm -hmm. that I'm talking about. Yeah. And, and, you know, so we could go on and on. And... I have created another platform which I haven't launched yet. Yeah. It's called the 3 Million Job Platform. And it's a Jumabe Bow. Youth Employment Digital Platform. Okay. 3 million jobs on the line within the first one and a half years of an Alan presidency. presidency. And, and, and because I know 
what is going to happen in Ghana. And so I'm not waiting till you become president and then you start looking for those who can do what. Mm. If you profile yourself on that platform now, mm. which I'll launch not too soon, you get into the system now. And inshallah, Alam becomes president. Within one and a half years, those three million jobs, you that's whether you have a job or not. Because the kind of quality jobs that would emerge from my great transformation plan, I need to prepare the skills for those opportunities. The market. Not for the market. Yeah. Not when you are there, you start thinking about, oh, who can I feed into the new petrochemical industry? Mm. I've talked about 10 new strategic industries that is going to blow up the country, diversify the economy away from just cocoa. Mm. Over 100 years, Ghana is depending on one commodity. Why will we not be poor? Allah, what about the youth? What thing you give us? Hey, plenty, plenty. Because we... Plenty stuff. See, we've, we've gotten to the level where you see every, every day you see people traveling out of the yeah. country. Yeah. Nurses, doctors, uh, people, people who have even specialized. They are traveling out of the country. And the last time the Ghana Medical Association yeah. president did a presser, he yeah. said the basic underlying factor is monetary compensation. Yeah. People are not being paid for what they are worth. Yeah. And even if the money is coming in, it is not um, frequent. Yeah. Now, a lot of things are happening. Graduate unemployment, and <laughs> we just did. This one will come and tell us. In, yeah, in, stories. In, yeah, uh, so so stories, then books, then a whole lot of things. Um, Me, as I did sit here, as I, as I finished my national service, I yeah. was supposed to do my service in uh, another region. Yeah. Me, I don't get money. Yeah. They say, make her go rent. The woman too, they take what? They could take advance, five years rent advance. Like, where I go get the money from? Yeah. Me, I, Problem day for the youth. Yeah. What did you have for us? I have... I know that the, the 10 pieces. Yeah. yeah so, you say you don't, you don't have a manifesto. Yours is a plan. It's a plan. Because you so, know how to do it. Yes. Yeah, so, for the youth, mm -hmm. anybody that cannot tell you what his plan is, don't believe him. Okay. Don't believe him. I have a plan. Oh, but people say they go reduce betting tax or they go oh. they go remove betting tax. They yeah, use the bet. So uh, uh, that's the only thing you can promise the youth of Ghana. Said boys are betting investors. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can I can quadruple what you can get from uh, betting. Because mm. the, 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 this betting stuff you can lose too. Oh, and obviously, more, more of the like world alone, though, than oh. the loser. Lose. Hey, Maza, we don't have to be saying in the history. Hey. If you want to be a world uh, campus, like, hey. this is it. Now, we're opening him, chat, 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 chat. Hey. No, no, no. <laughs> like I mentioned some names here. Yeah. No, no, we could not do that. We could just, we could just hey. be on that level. But, but, you know. Yes. Oh, but like that is like what the youth, they are engaging in. Because there are no jobs. Yeah, but so... The point is that they have had to bet, not just because they want to bet. Yes. You see, if there are other opportunities, they will may take a decision. Yeah. Uh, okay, maybe I can do this. Mm. So I don't necessarily have to bet, you know. But my, the point is that if somebody has a plan and there's clarity about the plan, mm. make sure that you give that opportunity to him mm. to come into power to implement the plan. Okay. So I have this 10-point plan. Yes. And I, I want you us to take it seriously. Yes. Because, you see, if you want to help a young person, yeah. it's either you help him to get a job or you help him to create his own job. Yes, enabling Those are the two things. True. Either he gets into self-employment yes. or you provide access like what to what we are job. doing. So let us start because of the, the, the creativity and the innovation of young people now. Yeah. The starting point is not even telling people that you can get a job yet. Yeah. The starting point is, look, I think give you big opportunity to, to create something for yourself. Mm. That's the starting point. Yeah. So that's why I've said that, look, 80% of young people in this country who are not in formal jobs are in trading. Mm. Yeah. True or false? True. 
Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, true. Be a See you on Instagram. Oh, you yeah. cut you right now. Yeah, like, yeah. You come, oh, you are there. What's your? Pa, pa, pa. Uh, yeah, pa, pa. I'm not pa, pa, pa. No. <laughs> you be saying, oh, uh, so, uh, who, who phones I may pay? Maybe an uh, iPhone. Uh, yeah. Do you have it or not? You won't say yes or no. You say, oh, try me. I did come. I did come. Yes. <laughs> you will go find him. <laughs> you will go Where, find Wherever him. you did, you will bring him. Yeah, you will bring him. Mm. So it's like, we cannot run away from it. Mm. The majority of the people are in commerce. They are trying to survive. Mm. Sell them. So, whilst we would hope that people will move from commerce uh, and trading into manufacturing, yeah. whilst they are there in trading, help them to boost their commercial activity. Yeah. So, the first thing is what I've said. Yes. Traders Bank. Yeah. You know, government should not ever think that they can, on their own, provide funding for every and then. But allow the traders to own their own bank. Mm. Give them the seed funding. Help them to start their own bank. Do you know how many traders there are in this country? A lot. Out of the 34 million. Because everybody is selling. Yeah. So it will become the most powerful bank in Ghana. Mm. Do you know how many people are selling? And so this is just pro- mind, it's just processing it. Mm. Now, so if government provides the seed funding for this, it's like we can pay. Mm. You understand? Yeah. And and then they consolidate their numbers. You see what kind of bank I'm talking about, this new traders bank. Mm. Because remember, even teachers yeah. eh, or nurses, teachers, they are not as many as uh, as traders. Yeah. But do you know the level of investments the teacher unions have? They have hostels, they have hotels. Yes, hotels, yeah. They, because yeah. once you pull people together, mm. small, small, small money they add, then it's a lot. So can you imagine a traders bank? Yeah. And you mean they are like the whole country, you go and put your, uh, even if it's 100 cities that you got that day, you go and put it there. So be for no That's it. This is taking Susu to another level. Level. I quite want the idea. I said, I know the minister do me Me pay him. Hey, call you. My best friend. The way the man is moving. Yeah. Okay, so, I'm auditioning. I'm auditioning. I'm auditioning. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, mm. No, so that's what it is. Mm. It's going to be the most powerful instrument in Ghana to support those who are in uh, commerce, mm. you know. And and so, and then the kind of interest rates, mm. because it's their own bank. Yes. Anybody who wants to do something small on their own. As a young person, it's never going to happen yeah. under an alarm presidency. Mm. Because if you go to a bank, they will say, "Where is your security? Mm. Uh, 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 your equity mm. and all that." But because this is your uh, your own bank, mm. they know that they will give you you will pay. You, you get me. Yeah. So that's the first one. Yes. The second one is the fact that we are supporting those who are in trading. Yeah. Does not mean that we should also not transition them into more formal businesses. So that so I've said that you will ask the banks to provide part of their profits eh, to new collateral free. Listen to me. Oh. So our banks now, I had to say, um, uh, uh, around that they have money. Mm. Now, as an incentive to support young people, that they will provide collateral free concessionary loans to youth-owned businesses. Businesses, okay. So it means that government... Zero collateral. Yes. There's, apart from zero collateral, mm-hmm. it's also concessionary. Okay. Concessionary meaning that the interest rate is lower than the prevailing market rate. Oh, okay. And so government is now going to provide incentives to the banks to be able to give this concessionary free. Is the Alan government capacitated enough to do that? But this is exactly what is going to happen. Okay. Because if something should happen, there must be a plan to activate it. Okay. 
And that's why this GTP and my 10-point plan mm. is great. Yeah. Because as soon as Alan becomes president, you start operationalizing these, these policies. Yeah. And it's not complicated. Mm. Um, and then we are saying that, look, if you go to the most powerful economies, yeah. they all have what they call sovereign wealth fund. fund. Sovereign wealth fund meaning that the country is able to mobilize their own resources and put that into a fund. Mm. That is called the Sovereign Wealth Fund. Mm. And then, because that money belongs to all uh, the people, mm. then they can use it to support ma ma vulnerable groups like young people. Yeah. So under this plan, we will use the Sovereign Wealth Fund, which Alan and Alan government will create to establish a youth entrepreneurship development fund. Fun. Do we not have it in existence? Oh. We have it. The MPP government, they have what, it. What, you mention the name. <laughs> <laughs> there is that, something, oh, there is right, something, something you... Those ones, that, that's the point, you know. Yeah. But this one is a dedicated fund. Okay. Which is going to be financed through the Sovereign Wealth Fund. Mm. Government does not even have the capacity to pay <laughs> salaries and, and raise incomes. Okay. You know, so when you hear about, oh, we have a fund, we have a fund, it's all development partners. Okay. World Bank, IMF, all these development partners that will, will give uh, some small money. That's not a kind of entrepreneurship development fund. Yeah. This is a significant substantial fund. Mm. And so I could go on, on but mm -hmm. what I wanted to point out that the starting point to help young people yes. is to make funding and financing available. Okay. Because if you have financing, then your creativity and innovation can be realized. Okay. Because it's all about money. Mark Zuckerberg and all these people, do you know how they became who they are now? Because when, like, they left school, including Bill Gates, when they dropped out of school, of course, they didn't have the capital, but there was a fund. Mm. It's called the Small Business Loan Fund. Yeah. In the United States of America, where as a young person, you have ideas, you go to that fund, it is collateral free. You don't ask for collateral. Mm. You do, There's no equity. It is the government that has created the fund to support innovative ideas. Mm. So that's where they all started from. And that's how come you find so many big uh, companies and entrepreneurs in America. So, so it's the same thing we are talking with, about. With the funds, 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 money will be out there. Money now, will be out there. Corruption. <laughs> How do we make sure the, uh, the money that we are, you know, all these funds and everything is given to the right people. The people will not, uh, it's a favoritism, this anya man. You know the kind of system no, that we I have. understand. Now, sometimes I watch the public accounts committee. They bring in people, they drill them. It's like, go home, you are done. Yeah. Nothing. It's like the system is toothless. So, the, an Alan government, yeah. how is Alan government going to fight corruption to yeah. make sure that uh, we don't waste our resources, we don't, we don't have people in position of power just spending our monies on anything that they want and everything they want? Yeah, just for the benefit of your, your fans, yeah. uh, I want us to understand that there are two separate issues. Okay. What I'm talking about, supporting youth yeah. uh, innovation mm. and enterprise, that is paramount. Okay. But that is also different from corruption. Mm. It's two sides of the same coin. Mm. Because it is in an economy that is driven by public procurement. That is where corruption comes in. Now, why when you see now where does the corruption come from? So Alan is, is, like, is like, advocating for a capitalist economy. Completely. That, uh, this time, uh, you, are, you are shopping. Hey, the man, they process that thing very quick. <laughs> no, no, because that's exactly, except that the use of the word can confuse people. Mm. Instead of a capitalist economy, mm. I am promoting an enterprise economy. Economy, okay. But you are 100% right. And I've been trying to pump this idea to show the difference between Alan and all the rest. Wealth in the hands of the people. Jobs for the people, cash for the, for people. the people. So 
You are right. Maybe when you say capitalist economy, that's how people will stay. Mm -hmm. I know there's some kind of negativity also associated, but it is the, an enterprise economy, an economy that is driven by business, by the private sector. Mm. Every serious, modern, uh, powerful economy is an enterprise economy. Mm. And you name them from United States to China to Japan to Germany to France. All of them, enterprise economy. But you came from a government that believed in introducing social intervention, which is more what, a social. Why has that taken us? Um, Free SHS is helping us. So I, I'm a see, product. So look. Free church is good, don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Because there are always vulnerable and marginalized groups in society. Yeah, yes. You understand? Me? Yes. So it's good to have programs that will take care of vulnerable groups. Yeah. However, if you create an environment where people have to expect that everything is free, you are actually undermining their capacity mm. to, to make money. Mm. And it also, it will come to a point where it's not even sustainable. So, free SHS is a good policy. Alan becomes fair, we'll continue it. Okay. But we will undertake an assessment of how it can be improved in terms of operationalization. Yeah. But this is different from an Alan government building an enterprise economy that is saying that I will give you money, I will show you where to invest your money. If you have difficulty in managing your business because you may not have that capacity, Alan is creating a brand new organization mm. called the Ghana Executive Service Organization, GESO, which is now going to be made up of all these semi-retired and retired experienced people. Do you know, some of you, maybe your fathers and things like that, they've been working at high capacity levels. They are 60 years, 65, they say go home. Mm. They are sitting at home with all the knowledge and the experience. They are sitting at home. But this new institution then brings them together and they now can be seconded mm. to these youth-owned companies to support them to have viable business. In this case, they are not looking for pay. They are at home, they yeah. have their pension. Yeah. So a little allowance to just keep them active. That is going to, if you go to all the advanced economies, they have this structure that I'm talking about. Mm. The United States has it, Canada has it, UK. And you know, the reason why I'm saying that it's unfortunate I have not trumpeted mine. I was a member of the Board of Governors of the British Executive Service Organization. Mm. Be, look, you see, this is Gesso, the British Executive, Executive Service okay. Organization, meaning that all British experts, semi-retired, and in fact, even seven professionals can also join. I was a member of the board of the British Executive Service Organization. Mm. That organization later was even consolidated with VSO. I'm mm. sure some people know about VSO. So if I'm sitting here in Ghana and- You can replicate I, I, it. I am, I am a board member mm. of the British Executive Service Organization. That is serious business. And that's how come now I can say that I can replicate, replicate, replicate it. it. In Ghana. Youth in governance and um, reorientation of our people. Ah, fantastic. We have a problem when it comes to <laughs> our attitude towards a lot of things. Yes. And you mean the young people? Oh, <laughs> oh. Um, recently, <laughs> like, we, we, our patriotism, you said, yes. like, we've, and you see, you can't blame them much about the fact that they are not patriotic because yes, they yeah. wake up, they see what the people in position of power are using their taxes for. So yeah. they go like, 
a minor cry this. So it's like right now, every youth is like fighting for themselves. Like, yeah. let me do whatever I want to do and bow. And that's why people can actually <coughs> do a video and tell you that the Dutch passport is this <laughs> as compared to this. Yeah. They see the ECOWAS passport as some contumely. Like, they have different <laughs> ways of describing it. Yeah, because it's green. They, 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 just, green, they, 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 they don't passport. see the, the use of it. They, just, they prefer other passport. Yeah. And that you can categorize as like people being unpatriotic yeah. and all and yeah. things. How are you going to reorient people yeah. to, to the point that, okay, now we are back. People are nationalists. People are viewing uh, things through national lenses. Yes, we yes. are trying to nation building yes. everyone. Yes. No, it's a question of, again, advocacy yeah. and leadership. Because like you're saying, a mindset change cannot happen by chance. Mm. <laughs> it will not just happen. But first, you need to recognize the importance of it. Number two, you have to advocate for it. Mm. You may say it's important, but you have to advocate. People have to talk about it. Yeah. The need for that mindset change among the young people. Mm. Then you need to have an institutional framework that would actually support the mindset change. Mm. Uh, Professor Buzia, who became prime minister, he was head of what was called the Center for Civic Education. After the overthrow of Nkrumah and the NLC came into office. During that three year period, there was the need for that same orientation. orientation. Yeah. And Professor Buzia established the Council or Center for Civic Education. Mm. So that is when you start not just talking about it, but you preach about it in churches, uh, in a, a, a mosque. You also write, mm. you know, and it's a whole cultural reset. Or, or reset. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> cultural reset. <laughs> that was on your bad. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, cultural reset. That's that I think is such a beautiful narrative. Yeah, beautiful. It's a cultural reset. Mm. And so the fact that Alan has identified that as a major problem and is prepared to put the institutional structures in place to advance that. And bottom line is that the young people will see that now hope is on the way coming. Mm. And once they see that hope is on the way coming, they will feed into that uh, cultural reset. But if they don't see any hope, and you're talking about cultural reset, but all the kind of things that the GTP is talking about. Mm. If Alan says that there has to be a cultural and mindset reset, they know that it is a reset cast within a certain context. Mm. Not just, oh, just reset your mind, you know, or rebooting, you know. This is not just a reboot, mm. you are rebooting, you are resetting within a certain context. Mm. Look, I'm, I, I'm just praying that People really interrogate what I've been talking about. Yeah. As against what you feel like people have not been paying attention. Yeah. Attention to what you have been saying. Yeah. But, God is a beautiful yeah. like expansion on what yeah. it is what is in the document. Hey, but how are you for blaming me? And, because but, me, I've been talking about this. Now a young one said, I know they say you know you've lost faith in politicians. Yes. So when people talk, it's like, oh, Alan, he's, he's, one, the of same thing. Yes. he's one of them. He's one of them. So that's the kind, you are bunching all of us up. Mm. But I really want, especially when I've made a commitment that I'm a transitional president. Yeah. I've said it, I said, look, I wish that we could have a youth movement mm. that would take power mm. from us. But unfortunately, the young people themselves, they are down. Mm. So they cannot propel themselves. So what Alan is doing is just to create the pathway mm. and propel you and then give you the platform to take over. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. And I said the best way to do that is to appoint a young vice president, demonstrably young. Yes. Then you can believe <coughs> that I'm actually creating a pathway. Yeah. Is that why people. you appointed Mr. Kwame? Absolutely. And I made it a commitment mm. when I met with the media. I said that, look, me, my interest is to create a pathway 
for young people. Yeah. You are so much interested in the youth. Oh, yes, yes. Because it's yeah, a, be a no, no, no. <laughs> you see, if at the age of 22, yeah. like I'm saying, at yeah, the age of potential in us. No, at the age of 22, I am a manager in the largest company in Ghana. Mm. Where normally you spend like all your life 30 years before you even get to a promotion. Yeah. If at the age of 22, mm. I'm a manager, it means that at that age, if I could compete with, you know, why why now? Why are we people, why are people being the on top potential in that's us. the point, you mm. know? So when I say I believe in the young people, it is grounded in reality mm. because I've seen the potential I had, you know, and uh, and I want. I feel that we should replicate it mm. for for other people. I I I went to secondary school at the age of nine. Mm. Yeah, Let me call him before, but you sure at the age of <laughs> nine, I was uh, in, in form one at the Sada College. Abiyo. So so when somebody is talking about young people, then you should audit it and see. Ah, this man, the the thing we talk about. Mm. Is it real or you just talking? Mm. At the age of nine, you see. Senior high school at the age of nine. Yes, at the age of nine. That's crazy. so. So it means that I know that if we push this youth agenda, mm. look, I have a philosophy. If you give a young person a job mm. and he fails, don't worry. First time you will fail. Second time you will fail. Don't worry. Mm. Third time you will succeed. Mm. So you just give them the opportunity to go through, and then even if they struggle, in the long run, they will succeed. Creative arts. Yeah. Creative arts. Yeah, yeah. You, you appointed someone with a creative arts background. It yeah. has sparked a conversation online. Yes. I think it's irrelevant. Yeah. But what is it? It is relevant. Why is it relevant? You mean I, that the debate is the irrelevant? The debate, I feel like we are concentrating on the trivialities. No, no, you're right. That, but uh, the man is of, it's an astute lawyer. Yeah. He's lived, he's served, yes, he's absolutely. working. Yes, I don't he's know. He's a corporate but, man yes. and things like that. What is it? What is in the Alan government for the creative uh, arts people because yeah. for us it's when you people are doing campaign that come and call us come and shout for you we'll be performing and we'll be doing placement for you <laughs> but the creative arts we have the creative economy yeah. the last time I checked for worldwide it's about 93 billion yeah, on tap yeah, yeah. It's Africa it, is sitting it, it, on some it's even more than that it's even more than that so what is in the island what is what what did they do for us I want I want always to make sure that I take people right down mm -hmm. to the text of what, because people also have to know the content. Mm. Don't just be pleased with the, the South slogans. What is the guy saying? Okay. You are not asking me what does, what does Anna have? Yes. First, I say, establish a creative industry fund mm. uh, to support young artists, filmmakers, Musicians and contact content, content creators, creators yeah. in the literary arts. Mm. What better testimony do you need? Mm. Because look, in this creative arts field, mm. it's all about money. For you to shoot a film, mm. I mean, so the point is that if there's no money, you can't develop talent. Yes. So mm. that's the first thing. Anybody who is a serious, all the people who are struggling, as they say, it's God's LA, they don't have access mm. to financing. Yeah. To, to, to rent one camera. <laughs> oh, or to put together... <laughs> to buy one camera. Is, is not buy, oh, edic, my brother. Edic. To buy, even to rent. Yes, yes. I mean, the buying, they are over... <laughs> yes, they're yeah, buying. Yeah. It's about money. Yeah. And when you go to Hollywood, yeah. you know, I was ambassador to the United States, Ghana yeah. Sabasa. Yeah. So me, I have a little... Wabo Brown. Wabo Brown, Wabo Brown, Charlie. Me, 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 I have to go home. Wabo Brown. They wait too long. Three minutes soon. So I'm saying that that's the first thing. Mm. You have to put money mm. in the creative industry. Mm. Because if they go to the banks, no bank will give money for creative industry. True. Because they don't even understand it. They don't like They think us. that, oh, this man, you are just, you are, some, you are just wasting. I've been there. Oh. People invite us to go and have meetings. Like, oh. You are a failure. You don't have a future. They yes, tell us. Yes. 
Yeah. yeah. So that's the first thing. Yeah. But the second thing is that when they have access to funding, you know, creativity and innovation has to be sold. Mm. You understand me? Yeah. To monetize it. Thank you. If you don't monetize it, then there are two fear now. Who bought you now? There's no money. You have to monetize it. Yeah. To monetize it, you have to create a platform and an opportunity for the talent to be shown. Mm. If the talent is not shown, how can you monetize it? So number two, host an annual youth and arts culture expo mm. to showcase the talent of young people mm. in the creative industry. And provide networking opportunities for them. Masa, no man make can. This is cutting edge, eh, yo. I brought you a crown once, no maybe, because like you, you finance them. You have to give them a platform to showcase. Mm. Now, when you have that uh, in a big annual expo, that is where networking. You go meet somebody at that expo. Because and you hold that Tyler change. Perry, Tyler Perry, and yes. Ubisa. You see. Mm. No, people they talk, they don't have ideas. Mm. Number three. <laughs> I say, I say, Alan the throw short, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Alan is throwing I short. I throw punches. He throw punch I lines. Punches. It is coming. Hey, last time I go beat this guy. <laughs> Why? Book on Banku. You don't know, oh. you know see my video. No, that was, no, 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 you don't see my video. There's things there for you. There's things there. Oh, inside. three punches, then the man did the ground. Book on Banku, okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> then number three, introduce new legislation yeah. and regulations and enforce existing IPR rights, intellectual property rights, yes. for people in the creative industry, yes. particularly the young ones. Because look, this intellectual property thing, if you don't have money, you cannot defend your, your, your IPR. Most of our artists are being paid 300 Because people will yeah. violate it. Yeah. But if they violate it, and you don't have money, yes. you can't even hire a lawyer. A lawyer to fight for you. Understand you understand me? Yeah. So the point is that we have to have legislation mm. that protects the intellectual property, property rights of people in the creative Cre industry. Yeah. Right now, uh, they are just being cheated. Yes. Somebody, you have created a thing. Somebody did somewhere where he gets some small money from bank. Mm. Then you come and take advantage of you and start selling your, your stuff. Ideas, yeah. And you, they won't recognize you. Yeah. Oh, that one is not there. It's very prevalent in our, our space. Oh, yes. People yes. lifting people's ideas, content, repurposing yes. it. And it's like, when you even argue for credit or like, oh, at least credit me, they say, nah. Yeah. It's an open market for everyone. Then it says that integrate the youth mm. in local communities mm. in the development and promotion of tourism. Mm. This one is super. Integrate the youth in local communities in the development and promotion of tourism by supporting youth-owned businesses around tourist, tourist areas. areas. Mm. Look, Elmina, uh, Cape Coast Castle, all these castles, mm. if you have the right leadership, the, 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 uh, the number of youth businesses, ah, people go to New York, they are selling T-shirts. I love New York. Look, and if you're a young person, you can buy T-shirts and then stamp them and just create a dynamic brand out of that. And around that place, when people come as tourists, they are prepared to spend money. Mm. But if there's no effort to support uh, businesses around tourist locations, people go to the castles, they come back. There's yeah. nothing to they buy. They go and cry and come. <laughs> yes. Most of the time. A, yeah. So then it says that support digital content creators. That is why I come in. Tio, Maza. Yes. That is why I come in. Support digital content creators, mm. including but not limited to influencers, mm. bloggers, vloggers, by facilitating access to training, global market exposure, mm. and the monetization of content. I'll vote for you, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it's, it's so difficult oh, for no, people. No, no, no. I can't believe why people don't see what I can offer. Look, this... if I'm president and I'm traveling, I take bloggers, I take vloggers, I take influencers, influencers mm. because when I'm there, 
It's not just carrying people with every camera as a, you know. No. You need to tell your because, story. Because you see, when you are in the new media, that is you where said new you media. Have, you know it. Hey. He just said, he said new media. <laughs> you know, he said new media. If you put four people <laughs> mm. on your trip to every place you go to as a head of state, the, the, the rich that you can get. Amplification. If you just take GBC, uh, uh, <laughs> they come, they shoot, they show, is that, that's the end. Mm. But the new media content creators, they are the ones who can amplify what you as a head of state. Yeah. When you go around, those are the trips. It's you ideas. Know when they are doing the wow. It's ideas. Wow. Eh? Then, okay. uh, then, then I'm saying that With yeah, uh -huh, <laughs> offer tax rebates and other incentives to telcos in order for them to reduce the high cost of data. Mm. You can't do all this with high cost of data. They're sending me messages. See, I have, uh, I have used 70% oh. data. <laughs> Expensive for Alan. Alan, yeah, bro. And then I said, yeah, bro. Alan, yeah, bro. expand the network of you know, innovation hubs by providing fiscal and virtual space. I mean, if you're a content creator or you are a tech, uh, you know, you don't have the money even to go and rent space. Mm. So it is uh, innovation hubs and things like that, that. So as for the ideas, they're not just ideas. This is, look, but at the end, you can program the idea. Yeah. But if you look at the things I'm talking about, these are policies that you can program because the way it is stated, it is very easy now to go into execution. Mm. You, you understand? Yeah. So Alan, that's the difference. Housing, housing and home ownership, rent. Mm. Rent, and you can't the shots here. Alan, I'm me you, I'm landlord, I was in the Two years. We have housing issues in this. And you see, we have institutions that are supposed to work when it comes to some of these things. It is even um, against the law yeah, out yes, there that you're not supposed to pick. Yes, we yes. are not enforcing anything. Mm -hmm. As a young person, as a young, you are a youth-driven person. Mm -hmm. So you need the youth out there. Even if you can't buy, rent something that will yeah. sort you out in there. How, what is your plan for house, house ownership, housing, rent, and all these things that is thrown all over the yeah. place? No regulation, nothing. Housing, there are only two options. Yes. It's either you own or you rent. Yes. Now, let's talk about home ownership first. Mm. Because, you see, the, 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 I think that the dream of every young person is to be able to own a house. Mm. But how are you going to own a house if you're a young person? Mm. And that is why I, I have made a categorical policy statement that, look, if you create a mortgage financing institution, mm. The mortgage finance institution will support every young person to be able to own a house. Because when they say you own a house, it means that you have a mortgage mm. for 25, 30 years. It's only Ghana where you have to put down fiscal cash mm. before you own a house. But the mortgage financing company that an Alan government will establish would make it possible for you as a young person to pick a house of your choice, and then the finance company will give you a 30-year mortgage, mm. and then you pay. But the key to that is that you should have a paycheck every month. It means that you should have a job that will give you basic income for you to contribute. And to you are going to provide that job. But, but that is, everything yes. is interrelated. Everything is, yeah. I mean. So I create an opportunity for you to get a job. I create an opportunity to be a first-time house, house owner. owner. As soon as you finish school, you have the opportunity to have a paycheck. And then based on that, you can get a house. Mm. It's like a dream. But that's how it is. It's very easy. It's not complicated. Mm. And then if you don't have the courage to own a house from the beginning and you want to rent, like you said, the laws about rent control. Yes, rent control. Why are they not being implemented? Because if you read the legislation, it's so woolly. 
no landlord would even respect it. Mm. Have you been to a rent office before? No, I have not. There are two people who are here. Rent office. They say they are here. The one where he said that they are here. They are here to control and they come out. They come out. Hey, I said more. I said more. No, it requires a complete re-engineering. It's a complete re-engineering thing. You know, the laws, the offices, the institutional reason, and obviously also the institutional backup. So, you need mortgage financing, particularly to support first-time house owners. So, it means that it has to be a moderately priced in the 80s through my own effort. No, it is now. No, in the 80s. I brought top level real estate magnet from Florida. Because me rapu na mo no mo say yes. Allah. He gave me his architects mm-hmm. to come. We were building a new technology that will build a house, eight square meters, two bedroom for ten thousand mm. dollars. Ten thousand dollars, fully fitted. Fridge, oven, furniture, furniture, fully fitted in about one container. Mm. Uh, ten thousand dollars. Unhumbi was and because the man believed in what I was saying. Me babaji as I say, Fafraha, me did team me by the first day we went onto the site. Langas. Ah, problem. Um, don't say, hey, we are out of here. Mm. <laughs> we are out of here. They left. They left. So, look. So, with all these things that you have, you know, put in a form of a document, a plan and everything, do you have the men to do this? Because we've heard it before. We have the men. We have the men. And when we give the men the chance to, <laughs> you know, run things for us, we had a problem. Yeah. You need men who will share in your vision to implement yeah. all these things because yeah. Alan can't sit at the yes, office of the no, president and do everything. Absolutely, absolutely. Exactly. And when things go yeah. left and you have hairs must rule and everything. Yes. Basic question is that do you have the men, human resources to implement this? The talent is here. Mm. They need to be mobilized. Okay. And they, they will be mobilized only when you have a plan to mobilize. Mm. For example, I've said I'm going to create 10 new strategic industries mm. which will diversify our economy away from cocoa. Okay. Vehicle assembly and component manufacturing. Mm. Do you know that through my efforts in Ghana, five out of the six global auto companies are now assembling cars in Ghana? I was at one of the, those things. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I profiled it. We I have, think the Amasamai one or something. We have... Volkswagen. Yeah. We have Toyota. We have Nissan. We have Hyundai. We have Kia. Yes, Kia. I was at the Kia one. We have uh, 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 Peugeot. Yeah. There's nowhere in the world that you would have five of these top companies competing in a small market. Because, what about Kantanka? Oh, China, maybe for Kantanka, dear grammar. Okay. So, you ask, but how did this happen? Just policy. Mm. I didn't have to borrow, spend even one dollar of government investment. Just providing the right policy. The kind of things I'm talking about are the same things that I, somebody has read, mm-hmm. eh? somebody who has capital, who this guy? I tried and do so. Somebody reads the same thing and says, ah, mm. but this is the country to go to. Mm. And they have brought their money. Ah, she say, like I'm saying, all these companies are assembling cars here. Now, you know that what is even beautiful? Mm. They're not just assembling, no. Before I left office, I had started a new program for them to manufacture the parts here. Yeah, okay. So we are now going to manufacture parts, which will feed into the assembly plants. Mm. Just policy. The same thing I'm talking about here. Yeah. Now, so if, for example, I'm saying that I'm going to create 10 new strategic industries. I just gave you one example. Yeah. There's the pharmaceutical industry that I've been talking about. There's the petrochemical industry. Mm. 
by adding value to our oil and gas resources alone, mm. even if we don't do anything else, it can completely transform this country. Mm. Because out of that, we'll get fertilizers, we'll get bitumen for our roads, we'll get plastics. You know how you get plastics. Plastics is the residue from processing oil, mm. petroleum. So all these new industries, where are you getting the human resource, like you say? Yeah. That is the beauty of this new platform. You, you get me? Yeah. The three, the three million, million jobs. jobs because yeah. I know what is going to happen. Mm. And I'm, I've started uh, creating a platform to document the interests of all of the young people. Mm. So that, oh, somebody will say that, ah, if I read the uh, GTP, Alan says that now the pharmaceutical industry in Ghana is going to blossom. Mm. I'm interested in that. So I put my uh, details in the, on the platform mm. and I select maybe pharmaceutical industry. Mm. Those who want to go into automotive, they say you select. Those who want to go into agro process, you select. So by the time I get into power, I hit the ground running because I know the skills requirements. Mm. Yes, you selected a particular industry, but I need to brush you up. Mm. You understand me? Because the Muslim school is there. Awesome. It only gives you the platform. So that, that our educational system too. So that's what I was going to come to. Mm. That our educational system requires a complete resetting and rebooting. Mm. Look, why is it that you can study music in America and end up uh, going into medical uh, school? Uh, medical school? It's because your mind is the critical thinking. Everything is based on critical thinking. Mm. You get me? That this kind of education, like mother, <laughs> your all you need is just go and then cram and then you chew go. And, poor. Mm. and then forget. It's not just chew and poor. Mm. Chew, poor, and forget. Ah, okay. That's and okay. I say, well, it's a cycle. Yeah, it's a it cycle. It is designed that way yeah. that you have to forget it. Mm. Because you only chewed and you poured it in the exam. So it's finished. Forget. You forgot it. Yeah. Yeah, more maybe I won't do it yet. Yes. Because you have not retained, you are not a problem solver. Mm. So the type of curriculum that I will put in place is to train your mind to solve problems. Mm. So in my case, I can do so many things at the same time. Mm. Sure because I'm a magician. Mm. Yes, it's all because of critical thinking. Mm. As soon as the issue comes, will be a friend, you frame it. You know, mm -hmm. it's framework, I call it framework thinking. Okay. Once you create a framework, then you have a formula. Mm -hmm. Once you have the formula, you have the results. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> beautiful conversation with Mr. Alan Kwaju Uh You, we see, we have discussed everything. So right now it's your prerogative. But at the end of the day, you see policies wise and everything, we they do your own analysis, understand what you need, your wants and everything. And when you when you did the the, the, the polling booth or whatever you said, no, make sure you vote for somebody that will represent your interest. But anyway, thank you, sir, for. Well, for give me a shout out. Oh, I will say I will say I make your own judgment. Oh no, because no, no, no. sir, I dare no one who okay. said. I know who's wrong. I don't know. No, no. <laughs> We should have a critical, yes, critical, a, critical thinking. Yes, so they should, yeah. The document is online, though, for those who want to read about the great transformational... Um, because the 10-point plan is only a small part of the great transformational plan. Yes. So I really encourage them. Yes, to read. Yes, by all means, read the 10-point plan because yeah. that is youth-focused. Yeah. But the youth focus lies in the belly of, of the, the GTP. Of the GTP. Yes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. But please, before we go, we go log out, the boys and girls for the WhatsApp group, just tell them something. Me, I'm not going to do the selling. You are the one going to do the selling. Young people of Ghana, this is an opportunity for you. The first opportunity that is being provided to you as young people to take the commanding heights of the Ghanaian society. 
And remember, power is a struggle. Nobody will hand over power to you by chance. But we all know that if we are talking about those who constitute the majority of our population, it's you, the young people. And so, yes, I want to chart a path forward for you. I want to open up the way for you as a transitional president and give you the opportunity to build a new class of young Ghanaian leaders. So I'm recommending myself to you. And let the people of Ghana believe and understand that it is the youth of Ghana who are bringing Alan. If you make this clear and the young people start making it clear, either on radio, through new media, then that is the young people of Ghana who are making Alan the president. The game is over. So it's over to you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alan Kwejo Chermatin, leader for Movement for Change. My name is Kwejo Sheldon. This has been Convo with the Head. Um, I enjoyed this thoroughly and um, I have a lot of, you know, critical thinking to do when it comes to <laughs> policy comparisons and everything. But um, I heard what I wanted to hear from him today and the fact that he has, he, he practically has a youth-centered policy plan for us. It's for the youth, for everyone out there. All the things that we've been crying about, it has been addressed here. We are looking at implementation and everything. Once again, your own prerogative, your own critical thinking, take a decision for yourself, and I'm sure you'll be fine with whatever you choose to do with, you know, Japan. <laughs> <laughs>